Welcome to video two for the Bellflower backpack. In this video we're going to start assembling our top flap and then we're going to assemble the exterior front panel. So the pieces that you're going to need to do this are your flap contrast piece which should have your uh, firm interfacing on the wrong side, your flap lining piece, your flap focus piece, and then you're going to need your your lower flap so you'll need the exterior and the lining piece and your lining piece should have your woven interfacing and your fusible fleece and then you'll also need uh, an exterior uh, the the upper panel sorry I'm gonna make sure I'm using the right terms here so no one gets confused so you need one of your exterior top panels one of your exterior lower panels and then you're going to need uh, the two lining pieces that you cut from the exterior lower panel so you'll see all three of these are the same size two are your lining pieces one is your exterior piece and you're also going to need one of the foam interfacing pieces that you cut from your lining pattern piece but we won't need that just yet so I'm just going to set it aside for now let's start by assembling the top flap. Now we're not going to do the turn lock just yet. Uh, I really just want to sew these pieces together for now. So you'll take your your flap contrast and your flap focus piece and then you're going to place the flap contrast so that the bottom edge where so where the largest gap is between the the long edge and your firm interfacing, you want to line that up with the top straight edge of your flap focus piece, right sides together. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew them together along the top here. And then <clears throat> I'm going to press my seam allowance so that it points down towards the flap focus. And then I'm just going to do one line of top stitching along the top edge uh, in the seam allowance. So along the top edge of the flap focus. So I'm going to go over to my machine and do that now. And then um, I'll come back and show you the next step. So the, uh, the front of my flap is now assembled. And you'll see I added my, my line of top stitching right here. You probably can't see that, but top stitched. Now before uh, we sew the lining to the the front of the flap, we're just going to take the pattern piece and uh, I've gone ahead and cut out the uh, the placement for my turn lock. So I'm just going to actually mark this placement on the front of my flap. Okay, and then I can set that aside. And then all you need to do is place these two right sides together and clip them together. And then you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew them together, but you're not going to sew the top edge. You're going to start at this corner, back stitch, and then sew, sew all the way down. Take your time along the curve so that you do um, a, nice, a nice curve. Um, and then come up to the top corner here and then back stitch. Then you're going to trim your seam allowance and turn your flap right side out. So I'm just going to finish uh, clipping the, uh, the exterior and the lining together and then I'll go sew them and I'll come back and show you the next step. The flap layers are sewn together. Before I turn my flap right side out, I'm just going to go ahead and trim my seam allowance okay and then I'm going to turn this right side out Now, 
if you've used cork or vinyl like I have for the flat contrast, obviously you can't you can't iron that part. So I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm actually going to iron from the lining side and then I'm just going to iron this portion, um, not this, the, not the portion with the cork. And then uh, once it's all the seam allowance is all ironed, we're going to top stitch uh, the outer edge. I've uh, I've gone ahead and pressed my flap from the lining side, and then I flipped it over and pressed this uh, the flap focus part. Um, since you can't press uh, cork, what I usually do is um, I kind of roll the seam, and then I just I I, I just add some clips so that it stays uh, where I want it to be. Now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm just going to top stitch um, along the outer edge and then we're going to set this aside and continue to assemble the, uh, the front panel of the bag. The flap is top stitched and it is ready for the, uh, the next video when we do the assembly of the, the, the back panel of the bag. So I'm just going to set this aside for now. And now I would like you to get your exterior lower panel pattern piece and your exterior lower panel, uh, the piece that you cut out of your exterior fabric. And we're going to install uh, two things uh, to this panel. We're going to install uh, one half of our magnetic snap and you're going to be installing the thicker half. So. Uh, a, the snap usually always has a thinner and a thicker part so we're going to install the thicker part and you'll need one of your washers uh, to do that and then uh, if you open up your turn lock package what you need for uh, this panel is uh, this the, the bottom part the, the, the actual turning part of your lock and you'll also need uh, this metal plate so I'm going to cut this up and I'll get the metal plate and don't lose, don't lose the screws. Okay, I'll set these aside for now. Okay, so these are the two parts that we're going to install uh, to this panel. Now we need to make the marks for the location of our turn lock and our magnetic snap. I am going to actually make these marks on both sides and I'm going to show you why in a minute. So here's the center of our turn lock and here's the location of our magnetic snap. And then you're going to turn this over and I want you to make those same marks on the, on the wrong side of this panel. Now the reason why I'm putting the marks on the back is because I'm just using a thin cotton. So a thin cotton with a, a fusible, a layer of fusible interfacing is not, it's, it's not very sturdy for such heavy hardware pieces. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a piece of fusible fleece and I'm actually going to fuse this where I'm going to be installing these two pieces. So I'm just going to go over to my ironing board and fuse this. Okay, so that's there. Like it doesn't have to be cut in a perfect shape as long as it covers both areas that's all you need okay so now we're going to start by installing the magnetic snap so all you're going to do is you, you place the washer over the the mark that's at the nearer the top closer to the top with the mark that you made in the little center hole of the washer and then you just want to mark the location of the prongs on either side and then you'll take your seam ripper and very carefully cut out these marks. 
Hopefully your seam ripper is sharper than mine. Okay. And before you put the snap in, add a drop of fray check on the holes that you just cut. And then insert the prongs of your snap, turn it over. Now, if you want to add a little bit of stability here, you can actually also add a scrap of Peltex. So I always keep my Peltex scraps for this, this purpose here. I just kind of mark, make marks with the, the prongs. Cut those out, put them over top. And then you can place your washer. I always use the handle of my rotary cutter to spread the prongs. Okay, so now your magnetic snap is installed. We're gonna cover the back of this before we continue, but I'm going to install the half of my, the, the bottom half of my turn lock first. So the installation for this part of your turn lock is actually very, very similar to how we just installed the magnetic snap. You place the washer, if I can pick it up, you place the washer over top the mark that you made. And again, this washer has a hole right in the center. So you put that right over top that mark you made. And then there are three uh, prong holes on either side of the center mark. The middle ones on either side are the ones that you want. So if you look, it lines up, the, the, the prongs line up perfectly with the two center marks. So again, you cut these out. What is with this seam ripper? So stubborn. Okay, and again, fray check. Okay, install the prongs of the turn lock. And then again, I want to add a scrap of Piltex. So what I'm doing when I press the Peltex is I'm just making an indentation of the, for the location of the prong so that I know where to cut it. And put your washer. And again, I use my handle to make sure my blade is covered. And with the turn locks, I tend to bend the, the prongs inwards as opposed to outwards. I don't know why. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. Now, because the turn lock is a bit um, is a bit bulky, normally what I would do is I would uh, fuse some scraps of interfacing over top, but because the it would be hard for me to press um, uh, the turn the area where the turn lock is installed, I'm actually just going to get some duct tape and I'm going to cover these with duct tape instead. So I'm going to go ahead and cover them with duct tape and then we're going to finish sewing up the front exterior pocket. All right, so the prongs are covered now with duct tape. You're going to take one of your exterior lower panel lining pieces and you're just going to place them right sides together. I know it's a little bit awkward because of the bulk of the, the turn lock. And then you just pin them together along the top edge. And you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew them together along the top. Why are my pins not sharp? Good grief. Nothing is sharp. Oh, that one's sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna sew this uh, along the top edge only. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, the two pocket panels are sewn together now along the top edge. And 
I need to flip them wrong sides together and press the seam allowance. So what I'll actually do is I'm going to press the seam allowance open this way first. Make sure you don't iron your duct tape if that's what you've used. And then I'll just flip them wrong sides together. And then I just press them, the seam allowance again along the top. And now I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm just going to top stitch along the top edge here. Top stitching is now complete and this I'll now call the front pocket and we can set this aside for now. We're going to assemble the lower flap. So we are going to need to install the second part of our magnetic snap to this flap lining piece. So I'm going to, I've punched out the, the, the magnetic snap mark on my pattern piece and I'm just going to transfer the location of my snap. And then again, you're going to use the washer, same method as you did for the front pocket panel. And then my seam ripper. I'm going to need to get a second seam ripper. Let's try this one. There, yeah, that's a little bit better. What does this say about me that I have so many seam rippers? Okay, we're going to put fray check on the the prong holes that we just cut out and then you place your your prongs through and then again we want to put you know what for this one I'm not going to put the scrap of Peltex because I don't want it to to show on the front of my flap but I'm still going to put the the duct tape so I'm going to place my washer the prongs and then find where I put my duct tape. Oh, here it is. Now in this case, because I don't have the bulk of the um, the turn lock. I could have just as easily fused a piece of interfacing to cover my prongs, but here we are. So I'm just going to cover these. Okay, then we take the exterior flat piece and we're just going to clip these two pieces together. And you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew them together. You're only going to sew them uh, along these, these sides and the bottom edge. You're going to leave this top edge unsewn so that you can turn your flap right side out. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your seam. Okay, so I have my two flat pieces together, sewn together. Just going to trim my seam allowance before I turn them uh, right side out. Okay, so then I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to press the seam allowance. Now again, I cannot press cork. So I'm going to press this from the lining side. 
I probably shouldn't even apply that amount of heat, but um, because normally what I would probably just do is roll the seams like I just did and then use clips to hold it in place until I get to my machine and top stitch. I'm not going to press too long around my snack because I did add that duct tape and I don't want it to melt. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to top stitch along the edge that I just sewed. So just along where, along the seam allowance. The uh, flap is now top stitched, so I'm ready to attach it to my um, my exterior top panel. So you're going to place your exterior top panel and you're going to have the longer straight edge at the bottom and then you're going to place your your flap so you don't want your flap facing this way you want your flap facing this way and so the raw edge of your flap is lined up with this longer bottom edge of your exterior top panel and you want to make sure it is centered and then you clip it in place and you're just going to go over to your machine and you're going to baste the flap to this piece for now okay so I'm going to go over to my machine and baste this in place Okay, so here we are. This is based, based on the exterior top panel. And you're going to take your remaining exterior lower panel and you're just going to place this on top. Make sure it's centered. And so you're going to have the underside of your flap is right sides together with this lining piece. And you're just going to Pin or clip these together. And then this time you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew all through all of the layers along this top straight edge. So all of the layers are sewn together along this top edge. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to flip the flap so that it's facing upwards and you're going to press the seam allowance and then you're just going to top stitch here. You're top stitching um, on the top part of the lining piece, right along here under the flap. Okay, so the top stitching is done. You're going to take your front pocket and you're just going to place this on top. and clip this together and then you're going to go over to your machine and you're just going to do a quick basting stitch all the way around so that you you attach the the front pocket to this back lining panel with your your pocket flap. You should also make sure that your pocket closes. Now I'm going to show you how to um, get the flap to, to stay curved downwards in a minute but first I'm just going to finish clipping and then I'm going to take this over to my machine and just quickly baste it in place. Okay, so the front pocket is basted on and now you have a giant slip pocket for the front of your bag. And you can fold your flap down. Now to get it to stay in this shape, what I usually do is I just put something heavy on it for a few hours and then it after that it kind of stays in this position. Um, I have some paper weights that I use, so I'll just cover it with a giant ruler and then I'll just use a paper weight and I just let it sit there for a few hours and then it stays in that curved uh, down position. Now remember the, uh, the foam interfacing panels that we set aside. Now we're going to, we're going to attach this completed front panel to this foam interfacing. You're going to clip it in place and then you're going to go to your, over to your machine 
and baste it in place. I use a zigzag stitch because what it does is it will compress the edges so that uh, your seams are less bulky when you're assembling your bag. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to baste my foam in place uh, to the back of this front panel of my bag and then uh, I'm just going to set it aside. This is the end of the second video for the Bellflower backpack. In the third video we're going to assemble the back panel of the bag. So the back panel uh, will include uh, sewing in the top flap, finishing the assembly of the top flap. We have to install a turn lock and we're also going to uh, sew the, uh, the, the adjustable shoulder straps and the rectangle ring connectors.